Today, we're exploring some of the findings from our Wicked Hot Mystic project, where volunteers drove their vehicles or rode bicycles with sensors all around different areas of the Mystic River watershed to help us understand which neighborhoods were the hottest and coolest during extreme heat waves. And this location was the hottest one in the watershed. It was 97 and a half degrees here, over 10 degrees warmer than the coolest location in Belmont at the same time. And Melanie uh, here from the Mystic River Watershed Association is gonna help us understand why an area like this is so much hotter than a different neighborhood and why it matters. This relates to the urban heat island effect. In urban areas or cities where there's lots of pavement and very little green space, it's actually a lot warmer than in areas that are cooler in other places within the watershed. I'm hoping we can go to some other places in the watershed yeah. and figure out what we could uh, look at to help us understand why these places uh, are hot and how we could cool them down a little bit. Yes, let's go explore. So we're standing here on Bennington Street in East Boston near the Wood Island Blue Line MBTA station, and it's hot. I can feel the heat, and it connects to the fact that this is one of the hottest locations that was measured and modeled in our heat mapping study across the entire Mystic River watershed. Melanie, tell us about this neighborhood. So here in East Boston, you can see there are some trees in the area to keep it cool, but there's simply not enough. And so there's many areas where there's simply lots of asphalt, and this can have detrimental impacts to the people living here because, believe it or not, extreme heat actually impacts people's health, and that's something that we don't often think about. So let's think a little bit about who lives and works here and what it might mean for them to be exposed to extreme heat uh, in this way. Tell us about this neighborhood. This is a vibrant, uh, working-class community filled with many essential workers. And so the socioeconomic impacts are really important to think about in terms of extreme heat. This is an area that is frequented by many commuters, both walking and driving. This was one of the locations that had the highest concentrations of particulate matter in the air. Um, can you talk a little bit about what that means and why it's important to think about that combined with the heat risk? High particulate matter means poor air quality. And during extreme heat events, it means that it only impacts people more. And so those folks with cardiovascular problems or with asthma, they can be impacted at a far greater rate than others. What's something that we could do with a place like this to make it you know, more resilient and yeah. cooler during heat waves? So public planners and your local advocates, so people who live here, can actually try to affect change by planting trees and increasing, in general, public green spaces in this area. So that way, all of the heat that is being absorbed can be released back into the atmosphere and then also help absorb and filter out all of that particulate matter. Less than a mile from here, we had a very different location that was modeled and measured a lot cooler. Uh, so maybe we can go over there and try to think about what that place can teach us about keeping a place like this cool. Definitely, just five minutes away is Belle Isle Marsh where it's so much cooler than this spot right here. And this is a very interesting spot because it's kind of proving to be an urban oasis in our Wicked Hot Mystic study. There were lots of temperatures that were recorded and modeled in the areas around us, places like Chelsea, East Boston, Revere, um, that were in the mid to upper 90s. But this location was modeled at 90 degrees Fahrenheit, much cooler than the average temperatures and the temperature over at Logan Airport that was reported officially that day. Lots of people think that the Massachusetts coastline used to be mostly forest, but it actually looked a lot like this. Lots of amazing salt marshes that provided a lot of wildlife protection and flooding protection, but it also keeps these areas cool because of all of these salt marshes, because of all of these grasses that are around. And so that tells us that we don't necessarily just need trees, other big urban landscapes. We can actually keep places cool by protecting salt marshes just like this. Uh, we're right in the flight zone of the Logan Airport. And so it's very likely like that all of the particulate matter is impacting this area. And so we still need better protection in terms of air quality as that affects all of the people that live in East Boston, Revere, and further down in Winthrop, and also all of the amazing wildlife that is here. And this is also an important bird area, so lots of migrating species come here and are around us right now, and so we need to think about them as well. Important stuff to think about in such yeah. a beautiful place. Exactly. Thanks, Melanie. Yeah.